Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and another episode of Gearbox. New week. Um, this episode and the next episode will be done from here in the back cave, and then I will be on the road for almost a week. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about a lighting solution, something I've talked a little bit about in the past. And then tomorrow, hopefully, I'm going to have time while I'm getting ready to show you guys a little bit of what my kit's like when I travel. It changes a little bit each time I go away, but uh, but I actually try to keep making the kit smaller, not larger. And so uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I have in there. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, one light solutions because I got an email from somebody asking about an episode I had done in the past about compact fluorescent lights. And it just got me thinking a little bit because when I look back, it was all the way back in September. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was if I could only bring one light with me or I only had time to set up one light for an interview, what would that light be? And for me, it would absolutely be uh, a Chinese uh, lantern, paper lantern, china ball, whatever you want to call it. And that's actually what I'm using right now. I haven't color balanced or anything. I just threw one up on a light stand. And I have a particular one that I like that I want to talk to you about. I have this other thing called the Gem Ball, which is ginormous. Um, and it's pretty expensive, and it's a fantastic light. But I have this, which I've shown once before, which I want to talk to you guys about. And I also want to talk to you why it's the one light that I would use. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go unplug that and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my regular lights and then we can talk a little bit about that and then there you go. So hold on. All right. Let me just go ahead and move this out of the way first. I'm going to drop this down. There we go. Okay. So that's sitting there. I'm just going to go ahead and take my key, whoop, put it back to where it normally is. Get it all positioned. Hold on, guys. Um, so, yeah, there we go. And we're almost there. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my normal fill light here. And um, as you can see, there's way, way too much light here. So let's go ahead and move this over. And I'm actually going to go ahead and kill this light, and then I'll just talk to you about sort of the setup here. Hold on. Go ahead and plug it. Okay, so here we go. Now, there are uh, a number of Chinese lantern solutions out there on the market. This, for me, is the, the best one that I've seen. And there's things I'd like it to do that it doesn't, but for sort of what it is, it's great. So I just sort of have a light stand here. I've got a little grip head here on the light stand, and I'm just going to go ahead and loosen that and pull this out so you can see this. Um, come on, Jim. Wake up. Here we go. All right, cool. So here's the deal with this one. Now, you can see here, tight, tight quarters here. Let me just get this light stand out of the way. There we go. So you can see here, it's got this little rod right here, so that can go right into the grip stand. That's the first thing that I really like. Um, it's extremely well made. It's built by a gaffer um, who works on Hollywood features. Hold on. I'm gonna detach it here so you can see this. This is the harp, the thing that basically holds the bulb, and it is not designed just for compact fluorescent lights, but that's what I like to use because um, obviously lower power consumption. This is an 85 watt bulb that probably, I'm going to say outputs somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 watts of light. Um, we can use tungsten lights in here. That's not a problem. And you can see I just turned this off and I can already, not that I would normally do it, but I can already touch this. Now you can see that this cage is really well built. I can put a really, really large light in here. Uh, this particular 85, like any of these that you should be using, has a built-in ballast. So, um, so you don't have flicker problems or noise issues and things like that. And I also really like this cage because you can just go ahead and wrap things around it. So for instance, if you wanted to use uh, neutral density uh, gels, you can go ahead and wrap that around there to cut the light output. This doesn't have a dimmer. It just plugs in, uh, plug and unplug. So it's hardcore real deal. 
and the harp goes for oh, I'd say about $185 but if you've gone to Ikea and you've gotten essentially what is just essentially the socket with a cord coming out of it and you've used those in the past you know they're not really conducive to day in and day out production so uh, having a little grip head and something like that you could put a grip arm on there really makes a huge huge difference and that's really um, the deal now the paper lantern part of it is just a paper lantern. Um, I have a little piece of mylar here on the bottom just to sort of help when you're using that harp. And it's just a really beautiful light source. Now let me tell you why I really like this as my one light. Because, um, well, because it just has a really nice sort of soft light that sort of wraps around. And... Um, it just creates unbelievably good looking footage. It's also a great light if you want to hang it above a table and you're doing sort of a round table kind of discussion. It just throws a really nice soft light around everybody. So you have a lot of different options there. And when I turned on my regular lights, the LEDs, which do give me a lot of other types of control, you know, for instance, I can turn off uh, each of the banks on here to let more or less light come out of it. The lights have dimmers, so there's a lot of control there. But in order to sort of get the levels that I want in terms of lighting, I'm using a key and I'm also using a fill. And with the uh, China Ball, just because of the way the light wraps around the face and it wraps around objects, you can get away with just using one light source. So, you know, it doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to use on every single project, but I really, really. Um, believe for myself at least that if I'm showing up and I've just got to get a light up onto a stand and only use one light then it's going to be the china ball so until next time I'll see you guys next time on next time gearbox